yesterday, the top story in the second hour was the official autopsy that was released to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, and it was, of course, involving the shooting of Michael Brown and what the results of that autopsy were. Well, after the St. Louis Post-Dispatch published an article detailing what the official autopsy of Michael Brown indicated, uh, it turns out that now one of the top forensic experts that was quoted in the piece is saying that she was taken out of context and that we can't really draw any definitive conclusions from the official autopsy. Now before we get to that, the Justice Department is also really upset that it was leaked to the public or leaked to the press because they feel that it is being used to influence the public and influence members of the grand jury. So let me give you the Justice Department's exact statement. An unnamed Justice Department spokeswoman called the leaks, quote, irresponsible and highly troubling and said, quote, there seems to be an inappropriate effort to influence public opinion about this case. An unidentified Justice Department official also told the Huffington Post's Ryan J. Riley that Attorney General Eric Holder is, quote, exasperated by the apparent selective leaks in the case. Okay. So by the way, this is exactly what we said yesterday before the Justice Department spoke out about it. We said, look, this looks rather curious. All of a sudden, there's a concerted uh, effort to present Darren Wilson's case in the public, right? There's a leak to the Washington Post uh, that we didn't even get into uh, yesterday as much, but there was certainly the leak to the St. Louis Dispatch, and it's all coming at it from uh, Wilson's perspective. That's yes. not an accident. Obviously, someone is trying to frame the issue to in the best light for him. Yes, so let me just very quickly recount what that report indicated. It wasn't necessarily the autopsy, but it was the way the autopsy was covered. So the St. Louis Post-Dispatch basically stated that Michael Brown was shot a total of six times, okay? The very first shot was on his hand at close range. So that would imply that he was obviously very close to the gun, somewhere near Darren Wilson, and something happened where the sh gun went off and shot him in the hand, okay? After that, and the article did not specify this, it did not specify whether or not the following shots were close range or if they were from far away. But now there are reports indicating that the following shots were not close range, okay? Now that's been clarified. His second shot was to the head, and that proved to be the fatal shot. The last shot, the sixth shot, was the one that shot him in the forearm. And there was an argument made by the forensic expert, her name is Dr. Judy Melanick, that he couldn't have had his arms up in a surrender position because of the way the bullet entered his arm. Well, if the second shot was the fatal one and he's falling forward, I mean, by the time he shot the sixth time, is it really reasonable to expect him to be in a surrender position at that point? It doesn't make sense. Now, nonetheless, uh, Melanick has spoken to MSNBC about the way the autopsy was covered, and she disagrees and says that certain things were taken out of context. Let me give her exact quotes. You cannot interpret autopsy reports in a vacuum. You need to do it in the context of the scene, the investigation, and the witness statements. Sometimes when you take things out of context, they can be more inflammatory. She continues to say, I'm not saying that Brown going for the gun is the only explanation. I'm saying the officer said he was going for the gun and the right thumb wound supports that. I have limited information. It could also be consistent with other scenarios. If other witnesses have statements as to where Brown's hands were, they could also be consistent with the forensic findings if they line up with the injury trajectory and distance. So that's why yesterday I thought this whole thing smelled really fishy. Mm -hmm. Because they took selected parts of the autopsy and then they framed it as, oh, Wilson's right. Well, it clearly it shows the whole thing was at close range. But it didn't say that. It didn't say the whole thing was at close range. Well, it was it, the... and. The reporting was framed such that Michael Brown was definitely reaching for the gun. But I said, how could you possibly know that he was definitely reaching for the gun? Maybe he was trying to protect himself, right? Maybe a lot of different scenarios. All we know is that he was close to the gun. That's why the blood splattered in the car. There's no question. There's no question that there was some sort of scuffle uh, in the car area and Michael Brown gets shot in the hand right there. That's definitely true. What happens afterwards is a total open question, and what happened inside that scuffle is an open question. Now, we posed that yesterday. It turns out the person who did the autopsy agrees with us. Yeah, and what I found really fascinating is that Melanick also said that there is a possibility that, you know, 
he got shot in the hand because he was trying to like push the gun away. Literally what we said yesterday. Exactly. So that's the thing. The forensic evidence is important. It exists. It tells us how many times he was shot, whether or not he was shot at close range. But it, th that doesn't tell you exactly how things played out at that moment. Okay? Yeah. That doesn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Michael Brown reached for the gun because he was intending to shoot uh, Darren Wilson with it. Now, of course, Wilson has a huge advantage here because it, for of two reasons. Michael Brown's dead, so he doesn't get to tell his side of the story. And two, uh, of course, if you're going to convict my, uh, Wilson eventually, you need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did do it, right? Yes. And that it was you know, homicide or whatever they, they charge him with. So given that it could be that there was a tussle for the gun, but which, by the way, it definitely could be. I'm not saying that dismissively. That is definitely one of the possibilities that Michael Brown reached for the gun. We don't know, right? But what we do know is after that initial tussle in the car, Michael Brown is leaving, right, mm -hmm. in some fashion and at some distance that's unclear, okay, um, and then he gets shot again. Now, it's not that we believe Michael Brown automatically, he's dead, we don't even know what he said, right? Mm -hmm. Why are we insistent that this is not, like, Wilson's testimony is not necessarily right? Do I think that Wilson just wanted to shoot black people? He's like, oh, there's a black guy, let me go mm -hmm. shoot him, right? No, we know what happened. He, Brown disrespected a police officer because he told him to get on the sidewalk and he didn't. They had some sort of tussle in the, in, in the car, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, what happened after that? And so many witnesses say, he put his hands up. He was running away from the cop initially, yeah. right? And he turned around and put his hands up. And it's not just the community, which is code word for, well, they're all blacks, of course, they're going to lie for you, one another, right? It's guys, the two contractors, who, who were not black, who were not from the community, and you see them on tape. Somebody recorded it. We showed it on the show. Right. They, didn't, they, know were, that they didn't know that they were being filmed. They, they had no idea. Right. They're going like this. He put his hands up. He put his hands up. Yeah. Okay? Here's the thing. Officers are supposed to use lethal force when someone is an imminent threat. I am not convinced that Michael Brown was an imminent threat. Darren after Wilson, he'd already, after he's away after, from the car. Yes, after he is. There are some accounts that he ran away from the police vehicle and then started lunging back toward Darren Wilson. Yeah, I mean this, I'm sorry, but it's like Trayvon Martin it's all so over stupid. again. Oh, Zimmerman was following and stalking Trayvon Martin, but at some point, Trayvon Martin magically ambushed him. Okay, okay, I know. Whatever gets you to sleep at night. One final statement from Dr. Melanick that I think is really important, and I think that she hits the nail on the head when she makes this statement. Okay, she so says, what happens sometimes is when you get interviewed and you have a long conversation with a journalist, they're going to take things out of context. I made it very clear that we only have partial information here. So let's leave it at that.